Hi friends, I'm Maddie and welcome back to the AFI Project Lab. We're slowly gearing up for winter and that means it's time to start bringing out some of our frosty fragrances. So today I've got a candle project for you that's pretty simple and it works great with any of your favorite winter scents. So without further ado, here's how to make a gorgeous sparkly ice vanilla wood candle. These candles themselves are pretty simple, but it's how they're decorated that makes them special. So if you got some plain candle jars like this laying around, this is a great way to spruce them up for your seasonal line. So I have tons of these mini glass jelly jars, which are cute, but as you can see, they're really, really simple. So to make them perfect for the fragrance I'm using today, I've got some Mod Podge here and then Epsom salt and iridescent glitter. Now I've used Mod Podge in past candle projects before. So check out my fairy dust candle after this one to see how, but I use it because it's cheap and easy to work with. It's basically a thin watery glue that dries clear. This makes it great for adhering decor to your candle containers. And so to make a frosty looking forest, you're gonna need some Epsom salt and glitter of your choice, which I have here. And I used iridescent bio glitter from Fizz Fairy. So we're gonna go ahead and start painting some Mod Podge here and let's get this beauty going. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a paintbrush that I have right here. And we're going to paint the outside of our container. So essentially, if you want to mimic trees, you can. I'm not the best artiste, so we can use our imagination. I'm definitely making trees here. All right, now that I have all of our glue on the outside of our container, we're going to go ahead and go in with our Epsom salt slash glitter. And once you have finished with this, just make sure to let it dry. And then if you want to go ahead and go in with a clean paintbrush to dust off any extra salt and glitter. She's beautiful, I'm so excited. Now you could stop here and move to the next step if you'd like, but if you intend to sell container candles like this, you'll need a way to seal the glitter and salt in so it doesn't fall off during shipment. There's a lot of different brands that will work for this, but make sure you pick something, well, Clear. So Mod Podge clear acrylic sealer or another clear sealant spray would work well. So to seal your candle vessel decor, fill it with a crumpled paper or a rag just to make sure no sealer gets inside and then just hold the jar at arm's length and just make sure to spray all of your sides. This technique makes it look like a frosted forest is lining your candle container and adds a touch of winter charm to a candle that would otherwise be, well, somewhat plain. You can use the same method to create all kinds of designs on your candle vessels. So with the container decorated, it's now time to actually make, well, the candle. So I'm gonna start by wicking this jar with a six inch Eco 8 wick and adhering it to the wick with a sticker top. So now that we've got our jar ready to go, we can now go ahead and melt down our wax. So this is a Pro Blend 600 Paris Away Wax, which is what I use for just about every container candle that I make. So I've got about three ounces of it measured out, which will be the amount that I need to fill a four ounce jar. So we're gonna go ahead and get it melted down and place it into our double boiler. I like using a double boiler because it's easier to keep an eye on the temperature. And if you have a Presto Pot, that works as well too. So while it's melting, we're gonna add in a frosty colored dye now this could be a pale green, blue, or in my case, I just purple. And I feel that this matches my fragrance, which has notes of lavender. So it looks like everything is nice and melted down, but before I remove it from our double boiler, I'm just gonna make sure we are at 185 degrees Fahrenheit. We're right on target, we're at 188, so that's perfectly fine. We're gonna go ahead and remove it from our double boiler. So I'll be using our version of the Bath & Body Works Ice Vanilla Wood Scent. It smells so good, guys. I wish I could, I wish you could smell it through the camera, but it's okay if you guys order some, you know. Anyways, we're gonna add in 0.36 ounces of fragrance oil and we are gonna stir thoroughly. And by that, I mean stir for about a minute or two just to make sure everything is nice and well incorporated. So now we get to pour this lovely mixture into our beautifully prepared little candle base jar that we made earlier. All right, so before we pour, we have to check our wax and make sure it's cooled down a bit. So for this Pro Blend 600 type, we want it about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and check it real quick. Alrighty, so we are at 163 degrees, which is absolutely perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and pour it in. So after you pour, make sure to use a bow tie wick holder or some dowels to center your wick. We just wanna make sure that as the candle is drying, our wick is nice and centered. That way you have a beautiful burn. So as always, avoid placing your candles in the fridge or freezer to help them cool. This really increases your risk of sinkholes and wet spots, which we don't want. 
So let's make sure we let this cool for a few hours and then we'll come back to you guys when it's all ready to go. Of course, once the candle is fully cooled, take some scissors or a wig trimmer to cut down the wig down to one fourth of an inch for a safe burn. And that's all it takes. If you want to get the best out of your hot and cold throw, it's a good idea to let the candle cure for about a week. Paraffin waxes generally cure a little quicker and you only need to wait a couple of days before your first burn. Soy and soy blends, on the other hand, benefit from a cure time of around a week. This allows the fragrance to settle into the cooling wax and burn optimally. So if you intend to sell this candle, here are some tips. My candle contains about 3.36 ounces of scented wax along with supplies and labor. It cost me about $4 to make, so I'd sell it for wholesale around $6 to $8 and retail for about $10 to $14. Remember, your price points will vary depending on where you source your materials. If you have any questions about making and pricing candles, be sure to drop them down below and don't forget to check out the rest of our candle projects over on our channel. As always, it would mean a lot to us if you would like and subscribe to AFI. We love making content just like this for you guys and if you want to see more, go ahead and ring that bell icon as well. I'm Maddie and I'll see you guys in our next video real soon. Bye for now!